twin tires because so much is riding on your tire. And by all the great barbecue products and supplies at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply and Pro Shop. I know you've got questions and we've got answers. So pick up the phone, 423-267-1023 and let's talk some barbecue. That's right, 423-267-1023. That is our number to call. If you have a barbecue question on this beautiful Friday night in Chattanooga and in Ottawa, this is Steve Ray with Jeff Maxwell. Cowboy Joe back at the studios, and you're listening to the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio 102.3, 267-1023. I know you got questions. You're dying to call. You're dying. Man, Steve, my, my brisket's just not getting it. My pork butt's not it's just not getting it. How do I do ribs? How do I do how do I do good burgers? Can I cook a burger on this grill? We, those are the kind of questions you have, and we'll do our best to answer them. We are in touch, so you be in touch too. Follow the Owl's Nest Barbecue on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And don't forget the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show is on podcast all over the nation. Wherever you find your favorite podcast, you can find the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live podcast anywhere in the world. The What's New in the Store, Steve, brought to you by Heath Riles Barbecue Products, available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Apple, peach, and garlic butter are just a few of the outside of the box rubs that Heath has created to make your barbecue have that distinct flavor. The new things going on tomorrow at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply. The first ever brisket boot camp starts at 7 o'clock. We have seven campers ready, standing on on the blocks, ready to jump off and make their brisket just a little bit better. Tomorrow we'll be doing that all day at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply. Also, I'd like to thank Skip Arp for buying his new Green Mountain Grill Daniel Boone model today at the store. Skip's brother-in-law, Perry Collins, suggested he take a look. And like most, Skip was impressed by the value, style, and construction of the Green Mountain Grill pellet cookers. Thank you, Skip Arp. And just in, our new supply of butcher paper for all you brisket heads out there that would rather wrap your brisket in butcher paper instead of foil We have what you need, both lengths 18 and the 24-inch butcher paper in stock at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply right there in Ultwa. Now let's get to our guest. This guest is the ultimate backyard barbecue guy. His passion for good food led him to share his experiences years ago on a new format called YouTube. His instructional and informative barbecue videos are shared today with more than 215,000 subscribers to his Smoky Ribs Barbecue YouTube channel. Smoky Ribs Barbecue YouTube channel. No matter if it's smoked pulled pork or smoked crab legs, this guy can do it all. Live from Biloxi, Mississippi, on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, Chattanooga, I introduce to you the one and only Russ Jones. Russ, how are you, man? I'm, I'm doing great, Steve. Appreciate you having me on, man. I really you, appreciate I it. I bet you didn't think you sounded that important, did you? No, I, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had, you know, fellas, I had no idea where Biloxi was. I've never been to Mississippi. And man, Russ, they, you, they about ran out of room. They, they stuck y'all down, down there, looking oh, like man. almost on an island, didn't they? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crowded around here compared to what it was when I was growing up. You know, there's so many more people on this whole whole area of the Gulf Coast. It's crazy. It really hey, is. Your your neighbor, I guess your your neighborhood or your got uh, wiped out in 2005 by Katrina, I guess, didn't it? It did, and I got displaced for like eight months up to St. Louis area. Wow. Actually, I was on the Illinois side of the river. Mm-hmm. But I was up there for eight months before I could make it back down here. And uh, that was just how long it took to get a FEMA trailer to live in. Oh my. But uh, every, everything eventually come back around and back to normal. That's just that's just part of living down here. You know, it happens. So. Yeah, how, how close is the uh, Russ Jones family to a beach nearby you? Oh, as a crow flies, probably about a mile and a half, two miles tops. So you are an ocean dweller. Yes. Oh, I used to surf avidly when I was a teenager into my 20s. Also, I uh, am still a certified scuba diver and been on the water all my life, fishing, just whatever, you know, shrimping. 
um, Russ, your, your videos, you, you talk a lot about barbecue, but you also mix in a lot of seafood. What is the, um, uh, how did you get into the barbecue aspect of food living there on the coast? Cause I'm sure, I'm sure seafood rules the roost down there. It does. Yeah, most of your restaurants, I mean, we have some really good barbecue places around here, like the shed. I know everybody's heard of the shed off of, uh, highway 90 there on 57. Um, I'm, you know, there, there's other ones on the beachfront or whatnot, but uh, seafood is king around here because Biloxi, believe it or not, way back, way before I was born, like when shrimping become an industry, like in the early 1900s, at one point, Biloxi, and you can Google this, it was labeled the seafood capital of the world, not just the United States, but of the world, and we still do a lot of it, you know, but... uh so that is king around here. But as far as barbecue, my earliest memories is riding around with my dad and we're, we're going to some of these little roadside shacks, you know, with these old black men was barbecuing beef, had like pulled beef barbecue sandwiches and pulled pork. There's a few places in Mobile, Alabama back then that we used to go to. And, uh, man, I just loved it. I mm -hmm. just had a passion for that taste, you know. And uh, naturally, when I become an adult, my dad didn't barbecue. He'd just go buy it, the good stuff, you know. But when I got older, I wanted to do it, and I did. I mean, I think day one when I left the house, I went and bought one of these little hibachi grills, first grill I ever owned, you know. And mm -hmm. from there, it turned into other things, then eventually smokers and whatnot, you know. But it's all self-taught, just the love and passion for it more than anything. What was your uh, first foray into uh, barbecue? What kind of? What kind of a pit did you did you pick up, and uh, what did you try to cook that you probably ruined? Okay, the, the very first smoker I ever had was a bullet type smoker called the Cajun Cooker. It looks a lot like your Weber Smoky Mountains. Actually, it's the same concept, same thing. Lid on top, water pan, fire underneath, and uh, I don't even know that Weber Smoky Mountains was out then. They could have been. Maybe it was a knockoff of them. I really don't know, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Back in them days, you couldn't even find Weber products around here. But I would say that 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 was the first smoker I ever had, and it was mainly doing like Thanksgiving turkeys. And I'd put a ham on the top rack and let that ham drip on that turkey all night. Man, it was good, you know. And that was probably my very first experience smoking meats, you know. For every, I want, I want everybody <laughs> listening here in Chattanooga. Uh, Russ is debuting a new look. Uh, today, all the people watching on Facebook are, are have already yeah. noticed Russ. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to talk like this right here. Martinez says that's not the real Russ Jones. Russ Russ yeah. had a uh, goatee for 25 years, and due to his yeah. safety protocol at work, had to shave it this week. And I am proud to say that this is the first public appearance of the new look of Russ yeah. Jones. And I am honored that it was made right here on the Al's Nest Barbecue Show Live, Russ. I appreciate that very much. Get used to it because I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. You know, <laughs> once I retire or whatever, then I can do whatever. But until then, that's the new look. That's the new me. Well, it looks great. You know how I feel about facial hair. You look better than you did, I think. But not everybody's going to agree with me. But that's the last we'll talk about the hair. We're with Russ Jones from Biloxi, <laughs> uh, Mississippi. He is the uh, – I'm, I'm going to call you a legend because you have uh, – You've been around a long time, Russ. I've known your presence in the barbecue world for at least four years by by you know watching your your videos and um, mm -hmm. over two hundred and fifteen thousand subscribers on uh, YouTube and um, and you know Russ. Most uh, all of us bar in the barbecue community watch v videos of people, and you're one of my favorites. And we're going to talk about one that you did. How did you get into the uh, into the YouTube racket because your your videos are um, uh, they're very straightforward, very you know they're very informative. You you have a lot of bolt of nuts and bolts stuff like the series you did for the beginners on a, mm -hmm. you did a whole series of barbecue beginner things that was just fantastic. How did you get into it? And YouTube itself, yeah. I I kind of stumbled across. I had heard of YouTube. I mean. Back in like when YouTube first come out, it was all over the news. You know, this on YouTube. I said, "What the heck is YouTube? YouTube?" You know, I, I didn't really know what it was. And of course, over time, you know, I said, "Okay, this is a video platform where you can 
take a little camera and post a little stupid video and blah, blah, blah. Never really paid it no attention. And then uh, I got to look, and actually it, it started from me trying to figure a way to make possibly enough to get me out of my job or whatever. It was something different. So I designed a website, and I called it Cave Mart cavemart.com bought the domain did everything and part of you know like man cave stuff of course is grilling and smoking meats and all that and i was doing it all the time anyway so i got to looking on youtube i don't know what prompted me to go there but i got to look in and I, that's where i found the barbecue channels the the early ones some of the friends i got now that we still keep in touch and call on a regular basis you know like uh troy with with T-Roy Cooks, Greg with Ballistic Barbecue, just to na uh, mention a few, there's others. But uh, anyway, you know, I'm sitting there looking at it, I was like, oh man, I could do this. So I did, I just, I fired up a channel in July of 2012, wow. I had an iPhone 4, <laughs> and believe me, <laughs> that had a lot to be desired looking back on it. But that's what I shot my videos with, that was my audio, that was my whole production. And back then, YouTube had a few editors where you could edit the videos online through them. Oh. You know, not them as the third-party thing. So if you go way back to, like, my first videos, you'll see that, that online editor that I used. And it just progressively become an addiction and got more involved, got better equipment, better software for editing. Just it's, It was a natural progression. If I had it to do over again... I probably would have named it anything but Smoky Ribs Barbecue. I mean, it's like, how lame. You know, I could have come up with something better than that, but I, like I was that. just getting like my feet it. wet. But now it's to the size I wouldn't dare change it. Yep. You know, that's what people identify me with. And uh, if I had it to do over again, I would have done my homework, which has changed. Back in 2012, the quality of videos wasn't as good as what it is now. The sound wasn't as good. So you didn't have a lot to judge by. But I notice a lot of creators now, they are doing their homework before they ever put their first video out. And when they do, the video is great. The audio is crisp. Everything about it is right. It, you know? Oh, it's, a, and, uh, it's professional production. But, there's no doubt. Yeah. And, but I had to, to like go through a metamorphosis to get to that stage and it's still not perfect, but it's good enough for YouTube is what I always say, you now, know? So now here in, here in, uh, old to our hometown in Chattanooga, Russ, we're joined online by, um, our friend Al Selvage and Al, I'm glad you're watching on the Facebook side of things. Russ, before we take our first break, would you please tell the good folks here in Chattanooga what Russ Jones does when he is not smoky ribs barbecue i work for huntington Ingalls shipbuilding in pascagoula mississippi we build u.s navy ships uh probably four different classes lhas lpds ddgs we also have the offshore water for the u.s uh, united states coast guard we build those ships as well mm -hmm. and uh that's what i do and what i was do you, in management what do you for, do on the boat what do you do okay i was I was a manager for the last nine years over pipe welders. Mm -hmm. I was a pipe welder out there for 30 some odd years, been there a manager for the last nine. I just stepped back down to pipe welding because I'm going to retire in like a year, year and a half. And uh, most managers do that to where they get the lower, cheaper insurance when they finally do, you know, retire. And uh, so I'm back to pipe welding after nine years. And believe it or not, I surprised myself. I, I still got, I ain't going to say I was good as what I was, but it's good enough. I'm you know. sure Al Selvage just stood up and saluted you because he's a, a retired <laughs> welder, too, and there's nothing like that brotherhood, is it? We're going to take our first Absolutely. break. We're with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. During the break, if you're on your computer, go to YouTube and pull up Smoky Ribs Barbecue, and you can check in some of uh, Russ's uh, videos while we're away, and you can people on Facebook can watch here, too, and see us on the VCAM in the background. You're listening to... The Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio 102.3. The Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply is the proud home of all the butcher barbecue products from two-time world champion David Bosca. His rub sauce and grilling oils turn ordinary barbecue into extraordinary barbecue. Grilling addiction rub to the famous barbecue mud. Get your butcher barbecue products at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ultawa. We'll be right back with Russ Jones. Stay with us right here on Talk Radio 102.3.
Oh yeah, Rush, you're getting a lot of the a lot of the comments about the uh let's see our friend uh Jeff uh, Rice <laughs> up in uh Wisconsin said looks like he dropped the chin strap. <laughs> Tom, I've got. There's a better one on there. Tom Ehod says, "Reicher, take note of what a mustache should look like." <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Everybody jumping on poor old Jeff. I thought about going to a costume place and just buying a fake beard just to wear during my videos. <laughs> take it off for work. <laughs> I, I now I hope you videoed you shaving it off. Tell me I didn't. Did. I should have. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That would have been epic. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> you, you know, your 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 video, I mean, your your goatee is as famous as Tom Horseman's hands in his yeah. videos. You know what I mean? That's all you yeah. see of him are those hands. And uh, as a matter of fact, the funniest thing I ever saw on Jeff Reiser's show, well, they're actually the only interesting thing I ever saw on Jeff oh, Reiser's no. Here we show. Go. Here we go. <laughs> well, he had he had Steve Horseman on, Tom's son, and somebody in the chat room said, "I don't believe that's Tom's son. Show me your hands." <laughs> Just so he could compare. <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about, it's very funny. If you don't know what I'm talking yeah. about, what are you talking about? The funniest thing I ever saw on Reiser's show was he. Uh, Gave you a hard time about the amount of viewers. You go, well, you ain't actually burning up the forest now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the YouTube guys. Al Selvage says he was a welder for 42 plus years, Russ. That's about how long I've been welding. I'm 62 years old, going on 63. I don't remember how old I was, but I know how many years I've been doing. It's either 41 or 42. It, it's right in that same same level there long time you ever feel like i don't get do you ever feel like you're too uh, old to appeal to the people on youtube yeah and there's coming a day probably to where i will be you know but right now it really depends on what i do like i just did that crawfish video a month ago and man that thing is going insane it's already up to 104,000 views it's just steadily growing you know mm -hmm. so but then other ones, I would say on average, most of my videos get what they did three and four years ago. You know, you, you hope they would start going up. But I also think YouTube channels are a lot like TV over time. People just grow tired of the the person and the channel and they just move on to other things, you know. But I'll keep doing it and as long as it has as much success is what it's having right now i really you thought know, that thing you did for the beginner barbecue that series was was kind of an outside of the box on talk radio 102.3 fm when you gotta know you turn to us wgow radio talk radio 102.3 fm the talk monster are you a malcolm reed fan everybody shake your hand shake shake your head up and down sure you are and we have the entire lineup of how to barbecue right rubs and sauces at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Oldawa. Did you see Malcolm use his classic, the barbecue rub, on a pork butt, then follow it up with his AP rub? Yeah, I saw that too. And you can get them both at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply right there on exit 11 in Oldawa. Our number is 267-1023. If you want to jump in and get in on the fun and frivolity, we'd love to have you. 267 one oh two three. We're talking with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. Now Russ is a uh, seafood expert too. We're going to talk about aged steak right now. But if you have a question about smoking or grilling seafood, now's the time to get in. We have one of the foremost experts in the country on that. Russ Jones joining us from Biloxi, Mississippi. Now, Russ, you did a video that caught my eye a couple weeks ago. It was a forty-five day aged prime rib. Now, mm -hmm. Tell me how you got interested in aged beef and why you picked 45 days, because that's pretty far out there. Yeah, I, I've done dry aged uh, beef before. Matter of fact, there was a video further back on my channel, maybe four or five years ago, using another unit that goes into your refrigerator to where you can safely dry aged beef. And I think on that video, if I remember correct, I went either 28 or 30 days. And outstanding results, you know. And uh, it's not something I do a lot. 
But uh, I do like, I love things like that anyway. Any kind of charcuterie, any kind of sausage making, dry aged beef. I just, I love that sort of thing, you know, playing around with it. And that's the biggest reason I do it. And uh, anyway, I've, I got the new steak ager and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, and the cool thing about this, I can do a lot more than just dry aged beef with it, but that's what I wanted to start with. And uh, did a lot of research through their website and talking with other people. And with this particular steak ager, without the humidifier that is an option for it, you can go up to 45 days on a dry age to really intensify that beefy flavor enzymes breaking it down a little bit more for even a more tender bite just an overall rich steak you know and uh so yeah and i was not disappointed so it looked like it tasted pretty good aaron if you would for the face people watching facebook yeah go to the uh, v cam time we're going to let that video play for a while while we're interviewing Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, you know, Je uh, Russ, around here, it's uh, 28 days. Jeff, wouldn't you say that seems to be the norm in restaurants, 28-day aged beef here? If you remember when we talked to Chris Brilbra, that's standard. It has to be uh, the USDA standards. Oh, okay. So that's so, so that's 28 days is, is required uh, for him to be selling in the shop. Okay. And, um, you know, people worry about my, my very, very little – experience with dry aged beef myself russ was i threw a couple of um um new york strips wrapped them with uh, gauze you know cheese cloth, threw them in the back of the refrigerator for a week until they got real hard and then took yeah. them out and and uh and then put them on the grill and they were fantastic uh, i gotta tell you they were better than just right out of the uh, cellophane but what um on yours did you did you did you read up first to make sure that um I mean, you wanted to still the beefy taste without getting into the. I've never tasted. I've never tasted forty-five day, much less anything over that. You know, you see some. You know, you see some places are four hundred day aged. You know, meats and, and yeah. crazy, just crazy numbers. But um, tell me, tell me about the thought process on that. Yeah, forty-five days is pretty much the limit that you want to go unless you have a humidifier to starting. Because you're going to completely dry it out. Mm -hmm. The whole time you're removing moisture is losing weight. And, you know, I lost like four pounds out of that 15-pound subprimal ribeye. So that's four pounds gone. Yeah. But if you continue to dry age, you're just going to lose more and more moisture. But if you hold it 45 days, your texture doesn't change. It's still really juicy. Your, your fat... I don't think you lose as much in the fat as you do the meat because fat is fat. It's, I mean, I'm sure it retains a certain amount of water, but the uh, definition of it when you slice into it is just like, wow. So you're still rendering that fat out as you're cooking this dry age beef, you know, as far as making it moist and juicy. But over 45 days, it begins to take on that funky blue cheese taste if you like that then yeah you gotta go extended amounts of time but you do need some way and like i said they have a humidifier for this one which i'm supposed to be getting to where you can extend that dry age and uh you know there, there's other methods also that you can uh extend it with but we're not going to get into all that. I'm talking about the steak ager here, but I wouldn't go over 45 days. And be honest with you, after doing the 45 day, and I've done the 30 day, I honestly think I would probably go back to the 28 to 30 days okay. on anything in the future on the dry age. You know. Now There's, is the is the standing rib roast the only thing you did, or what did you do for 30 days? It was, it was, uh, yeah, same thing. It was a ribeye okay. subprimal. Yeah. Okay. So you haven't put individual steaks or anything like that? No, that. you really can't do an individual steak because like I said, you have so much loss. You have to do the bulk of it. Okay. And then, you know, as you cut it into steaks after it's dry, then you remove the pellicle that forms that outer crust and that's even more loss. Mm -hmm. So and, and that's one of the downfalls of it. So what you're really gaining is just that intense, beefy flavor, more tender. And 
actually it, it becomes more valuable. You know, like if you went somewhere and bought a 45 day drive steak, you're going to pay a lot more for that steak than if you would have bought it while, you know, before it's draged. Same beef, just going through that process. Absolutely. But, the meat, the pictures that I saw of it, the meat looked, uh, it started to take on that purple color. Yeah. You know, yeah, it, it, it gets changed from the red dark. to the, it was going to real dark, almost looked mm-hmm. like uh, the color of blood. You yeah, know, it was you know. to the limit. I wouldn't have wanted to go no further with it, you know. Yeah. Now, you, you cooked them on, um, you <laughs> Now, 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 tell everybody about this little, this little uh, lovely that you cooked these things on that you also unveiled just a few months ago on your channel. This thing is, that, you know, folks, you know, you, you know, guys like Russ, they, they, they get cookers, and they they put them on YouTube and they show you how to use them, and they get the most unusual grills and all kinds of things. And tell us about the little nuggets you got because. Because that video was really the one you when you unpacked it and put it out. That's the most excited I've ever seen you. Yeah, actually, I did one prior to this <clears throat> where I did oysters on this, the uh, Lone Star Grill Santa Maria Grill, and it's the second one I've had. This one has the new upgraded grape system. Before this grape system, it was just expanded metal with a uh, angle iron frame raised and lower it. Now, if you can notice on this clip you're running here, you have the carbon steel flat bars, real heavy, mm-hmm. and it can really hold the heat. It also has an Argentine grate that's modular that will fit in a portion of it, and also a griddle that you can also put in that. And uh, I did show all that on the, the grilled or charbroiled oysters video yeah. I did just well, prior to home, that this video. This is the one that's got the big wheel, and you turn the wheel, and the thing yeah. goes up and down. It is really a... Uh, Santa uh, if you Maria. put it on your back porch, it, the first thing it is is a conversation speech or, or a conversation oh, yeah. piece because it's it's really the I uh, love it. The craftsmanship <laughs> is 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 second to none, and uh, that wheel that goes makes it go up and down. It's just so cool. I mean, it's just so cool, and you can start you know you can start with charcoal, but you can actually cook over wood. You know, you can get your wood fire going on it, and uh, instead of cooking over charcoal, you can do wood too, and that's what I like about yep. it. They're, they're so cool, so. That's what you cooked the 45-day aged beef on. And now mm-hmm. what was your process on that, Russ? I did a reverse sear. If you raise the uh, Santa Maria grate, then you are, in fact, even though the fire is under you, but you're at the distance to where you are at a certain temperature. And I had it <clears throat> at great level really lower than you would typically do a reverse. I had around 200 degrees. When it hit 80 degrees internal, I flipped it for even cooking. When it hit, I think it was 114 to 115 degrees internal, I lowered the grate and I seared them hot and I seared them fast. Mm -hmm. And I had a good medium rare. I I was pleased with it. Turned out great. And and the taste um, far better than just pulling it out of the cellophane? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a fresh steak. Yeah. Those steaks would have been phenomenal right out of the cellophane and, and reverse sear to however. If they're, I reverse sear anything that's around an inch and a half or more. If it's not inch and a half or thicker, then I'll just sear it and then sear it for still shooting for a medium rare. That's my favorite, you know, cooking uh, temp is like a medium rare. No more than 135 tops. If I can get it around that 130 internal, I'm good. Mm-hmm. All right, we're talking with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi, Smoky Ribs Barbecue on YouTube, one of the one of the better channels out there for information and uh, how-to type of videos for barbecue. Make sure over 300 videos on that channel alone. Make sure you stop by that channel and check it out for, with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. We're going to take a second break. You know, if ribs are your barbecue thing, then I have the thing for you. Craig Sherry's famous Texas rib jelly and Texas rib candy, plus his chicken and barbecue rubs are now available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. Treat your ribs with a taste of Texas from Craig Sherry. We'll be right back on the Owl's Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio 102.3 with Russ Jones out of Biloxi, Mississippi. Stay with us. That's a good description, Russ. 
Real good. Thank you. Real good. <laughs> now, Am I now, doing all right? Oh, you're doing you're doing fantastic. How's he doing? How's he doing, Ricer? Ricer will let us know. Now, Tom, um, let's see. Joe Mar, <laughs> did you read that? Read that what Joe Martinez said about that Oreo. Uh, did you know that they're actually fifteen grams? Uh, <laughs> you know the thing is, I was going to try to respond to Joe, but it was I was having a problem. Those were actually made a half a mile from my house. It was a company called Bakeline makes the Oreos, Oreos. Where I grew up, I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah. Joe Martinez also. Um, Yes, I can. I can pronounce fun and frivolity, uh, Joe. Funny you should say that. I received a letter from Greg Rempe. It was a cease and desist letter for using the phrase fun and frivolity. Him claiming, of course, that he invented that phrase on the radio, and I had to tell him that I had been using fun and frivolity for more than 20 years on the radio. So that uh, that issue is probably heading towards the courtroom as we uh, speak. Just a note for Ricer. Um, just so you know, Rush, you asked how you're doing. Better than last week's guest. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Man, Jeff, Ouch. man, we good buddies. We talk every week. <laughs> I know. I, you know, you, know how, you can always tell what Reister's going to have on his video in three weeks. Just watch your, your video today. It'll be copied. <laughs> It'll be, Jeff will have it up in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's Jeff, that's we're talking about Jeff Reiser of Dead Broke Barbecue. Everyone, he's a funny, funny guy. Jeff's a great guy. Funny, funny man. And Joe Martinez joining us from El Paso, Texas. He was on a couple weeks ago. Did a great job. We appreciate you, Joe, very much for being on the show and watching and listening to the front fun and frivolity here on the Alice Ness Barbecue Show live. On Talk Radio 102.8. If any of you guys listening far away, you want to get in on the phone line, give us a call. 423-267-1023. We'd love to hear from you. 423-267-1023. We'd love to hear from you. If you've got a question for Russ. Russ, I think we're next segment. Let's talk. Let's bring uh, a little seafood into the discussion. Um, I know, All right. I know nothing about seafood as I don't eat fake seafood or fish, but um, I am in the minority. I love, love seafood. Everybody does, except me, and um, we will talk about that. Joe, do you like seafood, Joe Varner? Joe, Joe gives you a thumbs up on the seafood. That's good. Russ, are Royal Reds uh, prevalent by you? What's that? Royal Reds. Oh, sure. Royal Reds, they sell them in our area, but that's caught really more in Florida as far as where they net them at. Gulf Shores and, uh, in that, that area. Yeah, somewhere over in Florida. A good buddy of mine, that's all he does is shrimp. We've been knowing each other since we were like four and five years old. And uh, he has been shrimping since he was 13 years old. There were full-grown men that would let this 13-year-old take his boats out in the Gulf and shrimp because he was really good at it. And he's just a couple years younger than me now. Has big boats that go on the East Coast and shrimps all over the coast. Here, Gulf Coast, you know, just wherever. But... Uh, I know from him that the Royal Reds are mainly called in Florida. Where exactly, I'm not sure. Now, have you ever cooked them or smoked them? No. Uh, matter of fact, the first time I seen them selling them here on the Mississippi coast, I thought they were already boiled because they were red. I'm like, are these already ready to eat? And I'm like, no, 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 these are Royal Reds. I'm like, oh. Those but I have been in the restaurants locally and, and eat, eating them, you know. Yeah. But uh, I'm real partial to uh, our old native shrimp right here <clears throat> off the coast. And uh, the, br the brown <laughs> shrimp being my favorite. FM. Talk Radio 102.3. He's the king He's the and he king. reigns supreme at the Alvinez Barbecue Supply. Myron mixing rubs and sauces. Set the pace for your backyard cookout. Myron is the winningest man in barbecue, and he wants to be part of your backyard team as well. So team up with Jack's Old South and get your Myron Mixon products at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ultwa. Myron is down in Memphis as we speak at Memphis in May, competing in that whole hog category. Those are the big leaguers. You ever done a whole hog, Russ? I have a couple of times. We used to raise hogs back in the day, and uh, we used to take cinder blocks and build it to where the grate was three foot off the ground, 
and uh, we would burn oak until it was coals, and we shoveled coals into this homemade pit with this grate, and uh, we would do what they call Georgia style. We would butterfly the, the whole hog head off, hoofs off, and we'd go, I think it was 12 hours, meat side down, then we'd go on his back for 16 hours, and we had to hold it at a certain temperature. And uh, then on my channel, I've done one, and that was in the La Caja China, the thing that uh, I think the guys from Cuba, it's yeah. made out of plywood. I've done one in that, and the only problem, man, it cooks a hog great. It cooks it in record time, but you're missing that grilled or smoke thing like you can, you know, like you do on an open pit. I could actually do it on my Santa Maria, but I uh, thought about doing it, but I just... That's going to tie up some time, and I haven't had the time to do that. It needs to be dead of winter, real cold outside. So I keep missing my window of opportunity on that. I tell you, some of the best chicken wings I ever had, Jeff did them. The guy sitting right next to me did chicken wings on the La Caja China. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a chicken wing maker. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. It it, it roasts. You know, it don't. Yeah. there's no smoke incorporated or taste of grill or anything. It is strictly roasting, so... Hey, let's get into a little seafood talk. We've already got a question. Al Selvage looking, looking in. He wants to know how long is seafood good in the freezer, and we'll get into that. Thanks for that question, uh, Alvin. What um, what's your go-to seafood item on the smoker, Russ? Well, you know, down here we boil a lot of seafood. Now I do grill shrimp, mm -hmm. and I love smoked mullet. I love smoked fish. I've done redfish. Uh, I've even bought locally, even though it's not a native fish, like steelhead and things. I love smoked fish. It, it, you know, if you want to talk about on the smoking end of yeah. it. And uh, I love grilled lobster, not smoked, but grilled. But smoking seafood, you got to be careful because, like, when you're talking about crabs or real delicate flavors and lobster, shrimp are great grilled. I would not put a lot of smoke on that. You, you really got to do a balancing act. So I prefer grilled, not smoked, when it comes to seafood. You know, mm -hmm. what, you know what I'm saying? Comparing two different flavor profiles there. Absence of smoke, more of that grilled charred flavor going on, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, what was that fish you we were talking about at the break? The red? Royal red shrimp. What's it called? Royal red shrimp. They're shrimps. Royal. Yeah. Royal red shrimp. Royal red when they come out of the water, they're pink. They look oh. like they're already boiled. And they're know. huge. Okay, I was going to yeah, say, do y'all have, have those big, what do they call them, proms? Is that, is that a type of shrimp, a prom? A prawn. Prawn. A prawn. Oh. Uh, we don't really call them prawns here. And there is a difference between a prawn and a shrimp, something to do with the legs and different things about its makeup. Uh, I don't know if we actually have what they call a prawn here or not, but what we have out here in the Gulf of Mexico is referred to as shrimp, and some of them can get gigantic, you know. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there is a shrimp that's becoming more and more readily available, but mainly on the East Coast, and it's an invasive species. That's the tiger shrimp from Asia. They have been cut loose somehow, and they're starting to get into our waters, and they will or can, you know, like wreak havoc on all the other species. So I hope that don't happen because I've tried them. I don't care for them, not compared to what we have. There, there is no comparison yeah, as far as no, flavor there's texture. There's no comparison to a Gulf shrimp, no matter what the species. Those royal mm -hmm. reds, you know, when you're talking about size, I, I posted a picture to a bunch of friends. That thing is from tip of my finger to the palm of my hand. That's how big that shrimp oh, yeah. is. And it oh, yeah. tastes like a lobster, it, in my opinion. And, and we get a lot of white shrimp that can get that big from here to here. And I've got videos where I'm laying them in my hands, some some really large shrimp, you know. But that tiger shrimp, I got that video up where uh, my same buddy, I was telling you about in the break, that shrimp's for a living. That head went from the tip of this finger, and it the, the shrimp ended down here. It was this length, about that big around, too big to do anything with, really, you know. And I just didn't care for the flavor of it. All right. All right, Russ, say say you have you have me over for the you say, Steve, come on down to Biloxi, Mississippi, and we'll take you in. Yeah. What, what's the name of the what's your minor league baseball team down there? The Biloxi uh don't they have a oh, minor God. league baseball team down there? 
You would ask me that. I know it, but I can't think of it right now. Not, I'm not a, much of a... the Trash Pandas. That's the Rocket City Trash yeah, Pandas. Didn't it have something to do with shrimp, though? I mean, I think that would name of them were shrimp or something. Anyway, we go down there. I we're can't gonna, We're going to catch a minor league game, and we're going to go to Russ's house, and we're going to we're gonna have like a seafood baklava, so to speak, something, uh, a real a real uh, throwdown. What are, what are you going to make, and how are you going to make it? All right, I'm going to probably do a lot of fried food. I'm going to fry the shrimp. I'm going to fry the oysters. I'm going to boil the crabs. I'm going to blacken the redfish on a hot griddle with some good blacking the seasons seasoning. And uh, we're going to have some sort of uh, sides that go with that that complements it. Definitely got to have some hush puppies. I mean, you can't oh, have yeah. the fried seafood without hush puppies. I got to go. Uh, I'm going down to block <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I'm going to hook you up. It's going to be a lot. What about I've got all this on my channel. Everything I'm talking about, I've got two seafood fries on my channel. One is called a swamp. What did I call that thing? I forgot. But anyway, I did frog legs. I did shrimp. I did hush puppies. I did oysters. I did uh, the black and red fish. I can't remember. It, 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 it was good. Oh, like a blue crab chowder, you know, not a chowder, but like, a, what do they call that? Kind of like a chowder with the core and everything. Mm -hmm. We topped the black and red fish for that. That was killer. Now, what about uh, what about crab legs? You get those big, those big, what do they call them, giant crab legs that are so huge and. Yeah, but that's not that's not native from here. You know, okay. we get them shipped in just like anybody else, and oh. those are fully cooked when you get them. And really, all you got to do is warm them back up. They had the the snow crabs. Mm -hmm. And then they had the Alaskan king crab. Those come from like off the coast of Alaska, somewhere around the Bering Strait. Yeah, they come That's from the not northeast from of Alaska. It's you know up in the Baltimore area up there, and then on the other side now, in Alaska. Now I, w I will let you in on a little thing that's coming up next weekend. I'll be doing and tasting for the first time ever Dungeness crab from the Pacific coast. I've got a company sending me two of them. And when he first told me that, I'm like, dude, man, when we boil crab, we boil like two to three dozen at a time. You know, you're going to send me two crabs? What's up with that? And, uh, <laughs> but I didn't. I said, okay, let me, let me research this. These crabs are anywhere from a pound and a half to two pounds each. They're massive oh, wow. first off. And I've already got it worked out how I'm going to prepare it. So I don't want to give none of that away, but look for that. I've got, uh, a video coming out actually i'm shooting tomorrow i'm doing the uh the cajun link venison sausage video tomorrow that'll come out this week but the following video will be the dungeness crab so keep an eye out for that it's coming soon and they'll be done on the santa fe you can use that the, the santa maria i'm sorry the santa maria i didn't say what i how i'm gonna do it that, oh. that's a surprise you gotta oh, watch okay. the video so we got oh. <laughs> Make a teaser, watch. a teaser. Make us watch. Yeah, well, that's the, right. Well, the, the Santa Maria is my is my new grill of choice. I'm gonna have to um, I'm gonna have to uh, look into uh, purchasing one of those. Um, They're nice, man. Did um, how long did it take you to unpack that? Is it they come in crated? I guess don't they? Well, if Ricer Jeff would have got his first, and I could have seen what he used, I could have done it probably in record time. And he's giving me fits over there because all I told him, I'm like, man, you're going to dread unboxing this thing. I mean, it's got two by fours. It's got plywood. It's got chocks with more. Two, I mean, nails everywhere. The ribbed kind that you can't hardly pull out, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it took me a little while with a pry bar and a claw hammer, you know. I think he used there with he? Safety goggles, a hard hat, mm -hmm. Sawzall, and yeah, he, he had all the right stuff. <laughs> Hazmat gear. Yeah, I, don't, I have I have no doubt. Let's we'll take our last break of the day. We'll be back just in a short while with Russ Jones from Biloxi, mm -hmm. Mississippi here on the Owls Nest Barbecue Show Live on Talk Radio 102.3. If you're a pellet head, if you're a pellet head, then you know your pellet smoker needs a quality fuel. At the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply, we stock barbecuers delight pellets that will keep your smoker running smoothly with great flavor. Everything from mesquite, oak, hickory to cherry, you can trust barbecuers delight pellets to stoke your smoker with flavor and dependability. Available at the Owl's Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. 
We're with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. And we'll be right back on the Owls Nest Barbecue Show live here on Talk Radio 102.3. Russ, have you ever done soft shell crab? Uh, yes, I have. It's on my channel where I deep fry them. They're great on the grill, too. I mean, you're eating, have you ever Rip. had? Oh, no. I don't Mr. Anti-Seafood. I mean, when you cook them, you can eat, eat the shell and all. Anti. Yeah, they they go into this molten thing, and uh, the only thing you have to do is lift that outer shell up and remove those filters, what we call dead man fingers, scrape them out. Then, man, you can cook that thing whole. You can grill it. You can blacken it. You can fry it. You can do it just however you want to do it. And it's delicious all those ways. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't care for the outer shell. To me, that's got a fishy taste. So normally, the first thing I do is pull that off after it's cooked. Then I eat everything else. The little, the little, uh, or the claws, the little flippers, the you know, the legs, all that, man. Just soft, succulent, delicious. Really good. You and um, Ricer and any of those other YouTube guys ever plan to have a a hookup? I see. Um, sometimes I see uh, T. Roy and the uh, elite guys getting together. You second tier guys yeah. are going to get together. I don't know. Uh, you know, back when I first started this, JB was Louisiana. What is that called? Louisiana Cajun recipes. He lives over in Baton Rouge, and you know, he used to do a spring fling every year. And there was like three years running. I would go to that over in Baton Rouge, and Troy, he would show up every year, and mm-hmm. U.S. Uh, 500 Booger would show up. Now, a lot of people that I can't even remember now, a lot of YouTubers and a lot of subscribers, you know, and it was a lot of fun. But <clears throat> I think that last one, we did it was at shopper's choice that that was jb's last one i think he's finally had enough you know it's a lot to put and host something oh, like yeah. that yeah and uh he's getting older too so mm-hmm. but uh yeah i don't know i would love to do something like that at some point some other youtubers Reicher keeps threatening to come down to tennessee and see us now, you've been yeah, to chattanooga haven't on- you russ I have. It's now, it's been a long, long time, and I mean a very long time. When I was living at home with my parents, we used to take vacations down to Florida when I was very young. And then as I got older, all of a sudden, my dad wanted to start going to the mountains. So mm-hmm. we'd always stop off in Chattanooga, and from there, we'd go to Gatlinburg, you yeah. know, after a night or two in uh, Chattanooga. And the last time I remember going was after I left home, got married at 19 years old, and me and my wife went up to, uh, did the same thing. Went to Chattanooga, did everything you can do there. We even start stopped at uh, Sweetwater, Tennessee on the way. What is that called? That Lost Sea. Caverns. Yeah, Lost Sea. Mm-hmm. Done that. Then then Chattanooga. And from there, Gatlinburg. That's when uh, Dollywood just, no, it actually, it wasn't even Dollywood. It was called uh, Silver, Dollar, Silver Dollar, City. Dollar City. Yeah. Back then, mm-hmm. that's how long ago that's been. That's a long so, time, Russ. That was a long time. That's forty years ago. Yeah. Easy, forty-two years. Wow, you were you were. Um, I was still in Knoxville then. You were just you were just right by me. Chattanooga yeah, changed I was, a lot since then. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I was nineteen the last time I went to uh, that area. Loved it up there. Though. Not much seafood. Nah. No, they a do have seafood. they There's do just... have some killer rainbow trout though. Oh my god, oh, yeah. that's so good. We've got a couple seafood places up here. There's a new one. What is it? What's that called? That new one on, on Gun Barrel? Pure eighty eight. Is that what it is? I think the best seafood here at in my opinion is at the boathouse. They live fire smoke that that full trout or whatever it is. Oh man. Those things Online, on air, and on demand. Click the links at WGOW.com. Talk Radio 102.3. Green Mountain Green Grills are the pellet smoker of choice for Big Mo, Jim Elzer, Sterling Smith, and dozens of other professional barbecue competitors. Come by the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply and see the complete line of Green Mountain Grills in action. The best pellet smoker you can buy, period. Available. At the Owls Nest Barbecue Supply in Ottawa. We're talking with Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi, one of the 
foremost authority on backyard <laughs> cooking in the United States. As he shakes his head, no, I'm not. Yes, you are, Russ. I promise you, yes, you are. Um, now, Russ, you're a uh, – we got three minutes. Thank you, Joe. Um, you're a pellet guy. What um, what kind of pellet cookers do you use? And um, in three minutes or less, explain why everyone should try a pellet cooker. Actually, I only, I've only had two. Both of them were uh, Camp Chef, mm -hmm. and I've given both of them to my youngest son in, in anticipation for a brand new one from Long Star Grills once they finally unleash this thing. It's already a done deal. It's already functional. It's operating. Due to COVID, they've had a hard time getting the controllers from uh, what? who makes that uh, fireboard. It's all USA stuff. It's going to be a phenomenal pellet smoker. It, it don't have the ignition rod. It has like hot air ignition. It's got things that no other pellet grill has. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Chris just uploaded a video yesterday and that smoke was purring out of the stack just like an offset. I can't wait. I'm stoked. But I love them in the summertime because it gets so extremely hot and humid here. July and August. Buddy, go out there and turn that easy bake oven on and go back in the house is what I'm screaming. <laughs> you know, that's a, thanks, Joe. I, that's what I tell everybody that when, uh, when we're talking about them at the store. I'm, I'm new. I'm only a year and uh, four months into the pellet thing. And um, uh, yeah, one of the first time I used it, I couldn't, I couldn't believe. I kept waiting for the next page to turn. You know, there's, it's got to be something harder about this than, than what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, there's really not, it's such a, uh, it's such an easy yeah. cooker to use. It's such an efficient cooker. Uh, the taste of the food is phenomenal and, uh, you just always wonder, great you, results always, you know, um, you, you know, you, for the person that doesn't want to, uh, uh, even, even as easy as the Santa, uh, Maria is to use, you know, just pour the charcoal out on the, uh, the plate and light mm -hmm. it. Um, these things are so much, they're, they're easier than that. You know what? Oh yeah. It, it's definitely a uh, true set it and forget it. it. It's just like turning your oven on to a set temperature and walking away. You know, it runs itself, but, uh, -huh. uh don't get me wrong. I love my fire, you know, as far as charcoal yeah. wood combination. And I really love my offset smoker. I'm that kind of cook. That's what I primarily cook with. And, uh, but there's nothing wrong with a pellet smoker, pellet smoker, pellet grill. And, uh, you know, I don't have no problem. Some people are like, oh, that's, you know, pellet grill, whatever, whatever, man. You know, it, you get the same results or I'm hoping I will anyway with this new one from Long Star Grills. There has been an absence of smoke flavor on some of the ones I've had in the past, but there's cures for that with smoke tubes and this, that, and the other. But right, there's Russ, always we, room Russ, we got for a roll. Bro. Thank you so much. Okay, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Russ Jones from Biloxi, Mississippi. You can find Russ on YouTube at Smoky Ribs. Tune in next week. We've got Burger Talk Joe on the Owls Barbecue Show Live only on Talk Radio 102.3. Until next Friday night. Good night and good luck, Chattanooga. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate you. Hang with us just a second, Russ. We do a little uh, we do a little Facebook post show meeting with everybody. Okay. I just appreciate you so much for being on the uh, show with us, um, Jeff. Oh uh, man, you're welcome. What uh, any, any uh, couple uh, of things on couple yeah. things in the chat? Uh, Al Salvage says Russ he'll be adding you to his long list of who to watch. Good. Awesome. That's good. Thank That's you. Good. Yes. Yeah. Um, there were some issues. Some people are saying we did, they weren't hearing us, but they were. Um, and Lyle Schneider is looking forward to seeing us tomorrow for the boot camp. Oh, good. Let's get boot camp. Oh, good. Oh, good. Now, what we're doing tomorrow, Russ, we're going to have a, uh, I'm calling it the brisket boot camp. We're going to have it at the store back in the uh, back garage. I've got a garage that's behind the store, and we uh, clean out all the, the car stuff. And we have the school. Okay. Right in the garage, and we're going to be and we're going to be doing the briskets. On um, I've got a huge um, old fashioned offset uh, cabinet cooker, and uh, we're going to be doing real live fire, and um, have all the, uh, the my, my the people that have enrolled in it. We're going to we're going to go over trimming, uh, we're going to go over the brisket, the muscles, the structure of it, uh, how to build a fire, how to maintain the fire, and let everybody have their hand in a little fire management. You know, we were talking about the 
the the pellet cookers and um yeah. you know that's one thing that if you have a pellet cooker you don't get any experience in is that and that's the fire management and you know that's something exactly. that um when a lot of people you know get to do it they they really enjoy that yeah so you know we're, i tell you the truth man out of everything i've ever owned i love my offset more than anything and it runs itself if you remember to throw a little split in there, a little split. I know this pit like the back of my hand. Mm -hmm. Every forty-five minutes to an hour, I throw, and you're going to average it. I, I like to run at two fifty when I'm doing a little one mm -hmm. slow. Two twenty-five yeah. just takes too long. I don't, I don't have no problem with two seventy-five, but anywhere between two fifty to two seventy-five, I'm good. You know, you you can use a big swing. You know, you, a lot of people saying, "Oh, you got to keep that thing at." You know, two seventy five. Don't let it miss. You you can it can go up and down and fluctuate. It's oh yeah. It, it's it's, and, it's and not I, that crazy. And also, it's going to when you smoke it with a new log, oh, yeah. it's going to increase a little bit, and then it's going to fall back in that range. It's going to ride there for the longest. Then you'll see it coming down. You know, then throw another one in, and it's just a, it's a cycling, kind of like think, a pellet grill does. I <laughs> you think know? average ambient temperature is what you're looking for. You might you might have some exactly. spikes and some lulls, and average ambient temp ambient temperature over six or eight hours, depending on the cook. But you you're know what's exactly fun? Right. What's fun about that is is learning to learning to you know close the chimney, open the chimney, open the the, the rear doors on this thing. Um, you know to let air mm -hmm. in, close air off. Um, introduce yeah. air to, to you know to get it up. That's what I, that's what I enjoy about it. Really, it's a it's not a yeah. sit, it's not a sit down cook. It's a it's a very active cook, and um, the time does go by fast when you're cooking on one of these things. It'll, these these guys are going to enjoy this tomorrow. Yeah. The, the one we're cooking on, they're going to really enjoy cooking on the smoker. Now, Russ, when you, do, awesome. when you do your briskets, do you uh, are you a separate them guy or do you cook them all together? Normally, I cook it all together, the whole pack of brisket. Now, I have a video where I actually separated the point from the flat because I had two videos I did of that. I did uh, brisket burn ends out of the points, and then I made pastrami out of the flat. So mm -hmm. that's the reason for that. But typically, I'll go ahead and cook it all. If I'm doing brisket, I'm doing brisket, yeah. you know. Same here. Same here. Russ, thank you so much, man. We we appreciate you. You're you're a great guest. You're very knowledgeable, and uh, really really appreciate it so much Fantastic. for being on. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Thanks for asking. And I hate it took so long. Now that I'm back on day shift, you know we're yeah, able to we'll, do it. We'll, so. get, we'll get you back on. We'll put you in the stable. Awesome. I appreciate Sounds you so great. much, everybody. Thanks, <laughs> Russ Jones for joining us here on the Owls Nest Barbecue Show Live here on Facebook. And thank you for watching and listening here on Facebook. We really appreciate it. We'll have a little hamburger talk next week. We're going to get uh, um, we're gonna get a few local chefs on, and we're going to talk about the perfect burger, of course, and uh, who we think has the best burgers here in Chattanooga. So uh, that will be interesting. So until next week, all of our Facebook friends out there, good night and good luck. <laughs>